Today we have the governor of the state that I grew up in, the great state of New Jersey, Phil Murphy. Thanks for coming on. Good to be with you, Brian. Thanks for having me. New Jersey was hit first by coronavirus, um, but there's something that I'm not sure a lot of people know, and that's that on the day that your state had its first case, can you speak on what you personally were dealing with? It feels like five lifetimes ago. <laughs> yeah, I found out by complete happenstance in February of 2020 that I had a tumor on one of my kidneys. It turned out to be malignant. And so they, I, I had surgery scheduled for March 4th, which I might add was successful. And as I sit here, I just had another six month checkup and so far so good, but it was pretty scary. And I come out of the uh, operating room, go to the recovery room, go back to my hospital room, pick up my phone. The first text I read is from my chief of staff saying that we've had our first COVID positive case in New Jersey. So it was, you know, I had a, a multi-week plan to slowly get back in the saddle and that, that got thrown out pretty quickly. I'm glad to hear that you're, that you're doing well now. You know, do you, do you think that that experience gave you a little more appreciation uh, of what New Jerseyans were dealing with in terms of confronting a deadly virus or lives being put at risk? I mean, I think any time you hear you've got a malignant tumor, you know, it's a moment of deep reflection, uh, concern, obviously. But I will tell you now, we're well over 27,000 fatalities from coronavirus uh, since March of 2020. I've spoken to many hundreds of families who have lost a loved one. Uh, the loss is overwhelming. So I, I'm a lucky, I'm in the lucky group. Uh, I, I may have had a, a tumor, but I'm still standing. But these folks have lost uh, a loved one. And, and that's why we, at all of our press conferences, we memorialize a handful of folks who have died to make sure that even though we always say we make decisions based on the data, this can never be just about numbers. We have to remember the lives that were lived and were lost and the families that have left behind. Well, you know, speaking of those press conferences, in August, a video of you responding to anti-vax protesters went viral. These folks back there have lost their mind. You've lost your minds. You are the ultimate knuckleheads. And because of what you sa are saying and standing for, people are losing their life. People are losing their life. And you have to know that. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Can you speak on what led to that moment and whether you think that it's a response that more people should take as we remain mired in what's seeming like this endless perpetual cycle? Yeah, I, I, as a guy who grew up in Jersey, you'll appreciate I did my full on Jersey. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. uh, pre-planned. It was spontaneous. In fact, my, my eyesight is not as good as it used to be. Uh, I saw some protests in the back of the crowd as I was pulling up and walking to my seat and I, I thought they were there for a different reason. And then they started lighting up the speakers, lighting me up. And I went, when I got to the podium, I had my glasses on. They were, you know, my body, my choice. I, I, and I said, enough, this is crazy. Um, they're, they're putting themselves at risk in terms of their own health or even life. They're putting others at risk. They're saying stuff that's not based on, in fact, they're believing stuff that's completely made up and it's com completely and utterly unacceptable. Frankly, I just lost it. Now, should we be do doing more of that? I, I, I don't know, but, uh, but I will say this, the folks who are unvaccinated break into kind of two categories, Brian, for me. One of them is a legitimate group. They, they don't speak English. They're worried about their immigration status. They think it costs money. They work three jobs, whatever it might be. For them, we're, we, 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 we reach out a, a helping hand. We're knocking on doors in communities up and down the state every day of the week. Um, it's these other knuckleheads that just uh, just ruin it for the rest of us. And, and I think we, we owe it to ourselves and to, to everybody's well-being, including theirs, to call them out. And what's ironic about that is these are the people screaming most loudly against the pandemic who, whose actions are entrenching this pandemic, who are, whose actions are prolonging the very thing that they're fighting back against. This is overwhelmingly right now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And, uh, which is tragic. It doesn't have to be that way. Well, you know, with that said, you know, we are at the latter half of 2021. We're still mired in this pandemic, having the same stupid arguments with the same people where somehow the concept 
of freedom is being equated to taking steps to save lives in the middle of a, a, the pandemic. What's your strategy in New Jersey to help put an end to this? And what tools do you still have in your toolkit that you're prepared to deploy? Yeah, I mean, when I hear it's my, my body, my choice, it, someone made this analogy. It's not mine, but I think it's an appropriate one. Is that what you say about drunk driving? Um, think about that for a second. Uh, if, you're, if you're drinking and driving, you're putting your own life at risk, but you're also putting other people's lives at risk. And that's what this is. So our biggest tool, Brian, continues to be vaccines. Um, and we're doing, I'm happy to say, we're still grinding away. We're averaging nine or 10,000 first shots a day, which, which is a lot lower than it was. But frankly, it's better than I, I would have thought it would be at this point. We are among the most vaccinated states in America. We are the most vaccinated big state in America. So I'd say that the tool, the, the tool number one is vaccines. Tool number two uh, are these things. As, as much as we're all sick of wearing them, uh, we've mandated it at least for the beginning of the school year in all schools. Um, I would just say for anybody who's watching, if you're inside and you're packed in with other people closely, I'm not talking about you having dinner with your wife or, or girlfriend or your neighbors where you know the vaccine status and you're at a table, but I mean you're in a club or something and you, you can't you, you can't know for sure vaccination status. I hate to tell you the smart thing to do would be to put one of these on. A lot less worried about that when you're outside. So people ask me about MetLife and people going to ball games. I think when you're inside, uh, you should wear the mask. But if you're outside, I think you're, you're largely going to be okay. And then the last thing, Brian, I, we, we just keep using the bully pulpit to make sure people know what the facts are to push back on these crazy made up myths, just to make sure folks have comfort in knowing what the actual truth is, and then they make their decisions. And overwhelmingly, by the millions of New Jerseyans, for all the talk about the knuckleheads, the overwhelming majority have done the right thing here. We just wanna make sure they continue to. Now, do you support the recent vaccine mandate on private companies and hospitals that receive funding from Medicare and Medicaid? Yeah, I mean, it's similar to the mandate that we have in place so we call it a mandate, but for, say, educators or state workers, it's get vaccinated or subject yourself to a, what would potentially be multiple tests, COVID tests a week. That's a model that, I'm, that, that we're comfortable with. That looks like the same model that President Biden is, uh, is uh, suggesting or putting forward with the private sector. Um, so it's similar to what we're doing. So in that respect, I think it makes sense. And I, I applaud the president for doing everything he can to get this thing uh, into the ground and behind us as fast as possible. I do think it's a little tricky to implement it. If you're, I spoke to a CEO the other day, massive company, but 10,000 locations, some of which have three or four people in them. So there's a hundred person or up rule as part of this. I think how you define that is a little bit of a devil's in the details. I think OSHA is going to come out with some specific guidance. So look forward to that. And uh, again, it's it's broadly, if not, if not quite similar to what we're doing in New Jersey. Now, your opponent in the upcoming gubernatorial election, Jack Cittarelli, he's come out in favor of exemptions that allow public school students to skip immunizations. He's claimed that kids aren't vulnerable to COVID. What's your response to these claims in the face of surging numbers of kids who are falling victim to the virus? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the facts don't lie. Never mind what we've seen in other states. I, last I asked Judy Persichelli, our tremendous uh, commissioner of the Department of Health, we had 20-something uh, pediatric cases of COVID uh, in the state, and a bunch of them were in the intensive care unit. But thank God we've not had much loss of life for anybody under the age of 18, but that doesn't mean that they can uh, get very sick or, God forbid, lose them. So it's just not... Again, I, it's one thing to have a political disagreement, but I think you got to be very careful when you're making a statement that is based on a false premise that could get people sick if not really sick. And immunizations that exist for me, measles and all the sorts of things that we've had forever and always, they're there for a reason. Um, and they're scientifically supported. So again, this my body, my choice stuff. I, I don't have any. I don't have much time for that. I have to say. So let's switch gears here. I want to talk about voting rights. 
While so many other states are busy restricting voter access, can you speak on what New Jersey's done to expand voting rights? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, done a, we've done a bunch. Uh, online uh, voter registration, we've allowed folks who are on parole or probation the right to vote again, which is a big social justice step that we had committed ourselves to. Um, we, we did vote by mail, uh, I think as well as any American state in last year's election, the turnout numbers were enormous. Um, but what I'm really excited about, Brian, this year is for the first time in our state's history, in-person early voting. So election day is November 2nd, but you could you can still, by the way, do a mail-in ballot. That's still, if, if you request one, you can still do that. But you could show up on Saturday, October 23rd for nine straight days. You've got the ability to vote in person, uh, which I think is a home run Uh it, 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 it avoids any natural disaster, bad weather, your train is late on election day, whatever it might be. Uh, if you work a couple of different jobs, it's going to allow us to do something that folks in other states have had this love called souls to the polls. So worship and then go vote. Uh, again, it, it encompasses two different weekends. I think all it, it, it's a new habit, though, right? So we've never done it before. So it's great, but we want to make sure people get that muscle memory and they get used to yeah. doing it. It's part of the reason I think I'm going to vote on that first day, October 23rd, just to shine a light on the fact that folks can vote as, as of that day. That's the big, that's the big uh, step we're taking this year. Well, now your opponent has a plan to ensure, uh, you know, voting integrity, which of course is code for purging the voter rolls and implementing voter ID. So first of all, was there any fraud in 2020 in New Jersey? And what's your message to your opponent as he, perpetuates the big lie. He's apparently spoken a stop the steal rally, which I mean, you know, it's not just that he spoke at a stop the steal rally. You're there with Confederate flags, white supremacists, the same cocktail that tragically led to the January 6th uh, insurrection, which by the way, where several people lost their lives, including a New Jersey native member of the Capitol Police. Yeah. Um, tell the truth. I mean, the chances of voter fraud and this is true, uncovering voter fraud is less than the chances you get hit by lightning. And I don't say that with any sort of uh, amount of humor. We lost a lifeguard a couple of weeks ago uh, in, in uh, Berkeley Township uh, struck by lightning. It just isn't, it, 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 it barely exists in terms of voter fraud. Now, do, does that mean that there aren't situations that come up that our folks deal with? Uh, yes, but it's a de minimis uh, frequency. It just doesn't happen. Our elections are safe and secure, and we're going to make sure we keep that way. Now, we just got done with the California recall here in, in my state. Uh, so next up, obviously, is your election in New Jersey. So um, what do you see as the biggest contrast between you and your opponent? What do you want to let New Jerseyans know as the biggest uh, you know, point of contention between the two of you? Yeah, I, I think the California recall, by the way, I just say, Brian, was quite instructive, particularly the margin by which uh, Governor Newsom won, and he deserved that, by the way. And there are lots of lessons for that. Listen, I think my election is, you know, these words are not on the ballot, but they might as well be. The difference between continuing to move forward or go backward, back to the bad old days. We inherited a state that was broken three years and eight months ago. And we've come a long way toward getting it fixed. It's still a work in progress. We still have more work to do, which is why, by the way, I'm running for re-election. Our work is not done. But I think you can say it literally is sunrise in New Jersey. We used to be on all sorts of lists we didn't want to be on. We're now keeping the company that we want to keep. And other words that are not on the ballot that might as well be. Making, per your questions earlier, making decisions based on the facts, the science, the data, or putting your finger in the air and seeing which way the political wind is blowing. Right. We cannot afford an extreme leader in this state. We need responsible, fact-based, prudent leadership in this state. We cannot take extreme leadership, and that is my fear uh, if you were to win this. I, I want to finish up with this, and I know that we're uh, we're running low on time. I want to finish up with this. Uh, let's let's do a lightning round real quick, and and there are correct answers to all of these questions. All right. Um, okay. So here we go. 
Wawa or Sheets? I think Wawa. Yep. Uh, Taylor that's Ham. That's a or close pork? call. Taylor Ham or pork roll? On, uh, on uh, Taylor roll. Oof! Oh, just hedging bets there. <laughs> you got it, Brad. Uh, you got to split the baby on that one. That is like a third rail. All right. Does Central Jersey exist? Absolutely. I live in it. That's the it's, correct as answer. I, as as well. I said on Stephen Colbert's show one time, it's kind of a mystical kingdom. Um, okay. What is what is the correct time for a diner to close for the night? Oh, I think I don't know. I'm gonna an actual hour, but they should go late. I, I like them going late because I've the, been on a lot of them late. The correct answer uh, is no. Is is there is no time that a diner. Oh, that I was gonna say. <laughs> that's where I was headed. I was gonna say twenty four seven. Yeah, but I, but I know a lot of the, I know a lot of the owners of the families who own them, and I I, I have too much respect for them. They got to make sure they get a good night's sleep at some point. Okay, so there was a poll done lately that ranked the most hated states. Where did New Jersey come in? I think it was the the states that are most envied is what people really were answering, and I think we came in near the top, as I recall. Yeah, I think we came in at at. At the top or the bottom, depending on where, depending on how you, uh, how you I, look. At I it. think that is pure envy by these other states. Yeah. They can't take the fact that we have the attitude, the backbone, the character, uh, the grit uh, that we have in our state, and they're envious of us. All right. Well, I, I do have one more note here before we go, and just you know, as a point of personal privilege, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. My whole family still lives there. My mom and dad are both healthcare workers in the state, and I just wanted to thank you for taking steps as strong as was humanly possible to get things under control there. You know, like for me, it was scary. I remember when there weren't even enough masks for doctors and nurses, you know, sitting at my desk 3,000 miles away and crying because I was worried for them to go to work. And, you know, I know that there are and were tens of thousands of people just like me, you know, and then I was lucky enough that my parents lived in a state where the leadership wasn't interested in turning their lives into a Fox News talking point about freedom. So, you know, my hope is that you'll continue to do literally whatever you can to protect people and that other governors and states will be able to look more toward people like you and less toward you know, certain others. So anyway, just on a personal that, level. That means you. a lot. That means a lot, Brian. I appreciate those words. And God bless your mom and dad and give them a high five for me and tell them let's try to find each other somewhere out in the campaign trail and give each other a hug out there. Governor Murphy, thank you so much for taking the time to join. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Brian. You take care. We need you back. 